mean, it was <clears throat> hard fought, um, one goal in it, but I mean, obviously delighted to get out in the right side of that. Yeah, I think top of the table clashes, and last week was no different. You know, when you have, when you have clashes like that, there's going to be nothing in the game. Um, and the important thing is to try and get to three <laughs> points, whatever way they may come. And to be honest, I thought we, I, I thought we were going to rue a few good missed opportunities. You know, Skinner's a one-on-one. -on -one. Ben, Ben is a good chance as well saved. Um, Aaron Trainer's a header after about seven or eight minutes on that side where he, he gets caught in no man's land. And you always feel against the bigger sides as such that if you don't take those chances, they can come back to haunt you. And um, but credit to our boys, I thought we dug in really, really well. I thought we showed a real solidness over the last few games as well, and a real good mentality over the last few games. Um, and Nice in particular was probably our biggest crowd of the season at Company Mile, um, to get a late winner at the shed end and hopefully bring a huge amount of people back uh, back to the stadium again. Sorry, uh, you mentioned about chances, <clears throat> and the other side of that coin, I think you restricted Linfield to very little, and we were talking there, like Joel Cooper and Shane Lavery, a lot have been talking and written about them this year, but they were really blocking it, blocking it out of the game today, and that's credit to your defenders. And the that's credit to everybody, and mm. it starts with, and, and no matter what, who we praise or how we praise, and you know, you've got to start with Jamie Glackin and Skinner at the top end of the pitch, because if their work ethic isn't right, people get time in the ball. That hurts the midfield, and then if the midfield are off, it hurts the defender. So, for as good as our defence is doing, you know, our clean sheets today is not about Chris in the back four, and as much as we applaud them, but it's about the front six as well and how much work that they do to stop the quality of ball and, and the time of ball or the quality of delivery that comes to them. So, as a unit, I just felt you know today we were we were right on it again. How pleased are you for Aaron Canning? Yeah, delighted. And both ends of the pitch. At both ends of the pitch, he's been, and I, and I said it down. I remember when he. When, if, when he first was here at maybe 18, 19, 20 years of age, and I, and I argued with his father at stages as well that, that there'll come a point he'll be a centre half, and I said it's the best position for him. And I, I flirted with it the last time around, and I played him there at times three, four, five years ago. Um, and he's now coming to the fore at that point of view where I just think it's the right time in his career to step in there. And possibly the same with Adam Mullen. You know, Adam's father, Damien, played for years at the Navarre and, and won countless B divisions and everything else that goes with the Navarre, and a real stalwart and a captain and a, and a great footballer of the game. And, and for me, Adam has played fullback for his whole career with us. He's just turned 24, I think, this week. Um, and he's possibly now coming to that stage as well. Where, And again, I've always said it to Adam and his father, he'll end up in centre half, and that's the position for him. So um, for the two of them, I'm delighted. And I just thought they struck up a really good partnership and are two really good readers of the game. I think there's three and a half thousand here today, something like that. Yeah. You've beaten Crusaders twice, you've beaten Linfield twice. Heightened expectation, you sort of type of person to dump that down. It's not heightened. It, I wouldn't call it heightened expectation. We've been, I've always had an expectation myself, and you try and permit that into the change room and the four walls and everything that goes with it. Um, and I wouldn't call what we have at the minute as an expectation. I would call it a buzz, and, and I think what we're trying to do is get a buzz back to this place, a buzz back to the north coast, and a buzz back to the town. And, and with more inquisitive people coming out today to watch the game. I was craving a goal in the second half to be honest with you because when you look when you stand where I stand and you look down there and you see it absolutely chock about you just crave that moment that people will remember. There's a lot of kids here today, I could see a lot of Bertie Peacocks or Corey and talking everyone else and you just crave that goal going in and the buzz that comes with it so that hopefully a lot of those people will come back again. So for me I have a huge expectation and the players have a huge expectation of themselves as well, but I think it's, it's creating that buzz again and getting this place jumping again and like it's been in the past. There was a real intensity about the game and a good feeling. You must be pleased how the players reacted to that because sometimes you're freezing from that big crowd. Yeah, we're getting fitter and, and I do think, you know, I think we, we, we've put in a, a careful amount of work in pre season and we've carefully kicked on since then and, and I still feel we, we have a bit to go in relation to where we want to be at, but the key thing is that we can go and fight, you know, these teams toe to toe and make sure that we can, make sure that we can do that <laughs> and to, make, to make sure that we to, and to make sure that we can do that so you know overall I just thought the game even if we hadn't I got the goal and it finished nil nil today I think the three and a half thousand would have still went home oh, that was a good game or it was edgy or it was tense and everything else and I think that's that's all you can ask for. Is there a part of you as well where it likes getting the one over and the likes of the Crusaders and other things in this world a lot has been made up from going full time etc and you are doing part time two nights a week is it nice just among yourselves, just to sort of make that look. No, sort of it's never motivation, to be honest mm. with you. And, and I think the games are tough enough, and and the games come round quick enough that um, you know you don't begrudge anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't begrudge any club the progress that they've made. I don't begrudge Larn or uh, Linfield or Crusaders or any of those teams who have done well in the last few years. You know, I would never begrudge them the scenario they find themselves oh, in. So, um, so no, for us, we just concern ourselves with us. We know we have a working week in a way that allows us to get the work that we feel can make us competitive, and that's all that we can do. For
it's an hour big game on Tuesday night, you need to take it lightly against Dundella. It's a competition that we've said you want to do well in. No, you know, and, and I think the key thing for us is thankfully we're starting to get a few players back. This, you know, the, the bench have been light there for a few weeks. I think bar Stevie O'Donnell um, touch wood at this point in time with everybody else who, who's fit and ready to go. So um, the key thing probably will be on, on Tuesday night to maybe try and freshen a couple of areas to try and ensure that we can deal with the three game week. But for us, you know, the League Cup, and I've said it to the boys in there, has been a cup that's probably hasn't been as good to us in the, in the years that I've been here bar one final. And, and it's one that we would like to get to get a run in. So, you know, we'll definitely be going out of it. It's, it's a big game for Dundella too. You like, you Absolutely. Top, you use your top of the tank. Bank Premiership. It's a big evening for them. It is. And, and, you know, they're flying in that league. You know, they beat Lauren in the last round. And when you look the night when the result comes in, you look at it and go, oh, that was a good result against Lauren. Did they make any changes? And then you look at the team and see that Lauren were pretty much full out that night. So um, that would give you an indication of the qualities that they have. And, you know, they, they have a lot of ex-Irish League player, Jay McGee, um, quite a few guys who've been about the league for a long time. So. Um, we know that we're going to need a big performance to, to get through.